Welcome. Welcome to the Better Than Yesterday Everyday Podcast, where we cover anything related to behavior change that will increase your long-term wellness and happiness. And now, here are your hosts, personal trainer and RNs, Matt and Jenna Lane. Hey, 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 we're back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Better Than Yesterday Everyday Podcast. My name's Matt. And my name's Jenna. And we're the, we the hosts of this here podcast. Um, before we get into today's topic, which is Jim Timidation, please go to iTunes. If you leave a review for the first eight weeks of this podcast being released, if you leave a review, negative or positive, and email me at mattlanefitness at gmail.com, I will send you a t-shirt, a Better Than Yesterday Everyday Podcast t-shirt for free. All right. Sounds like a good deal. And um, this is really, this is a, I think this is a very heavy topic, a very talked about topic, but I think your story, Jenna, is of course unique. And this is why I love you being on the podcast because you have a very different view than I do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is my idea for the podcast to talk about today um, and really the reason why we're talking about it is because I went to the gym with Matt this morning, which is only the second time that I've been to the gym at all for what would you say two or three or four years? Yeah. Several years. It's been a few years. Uh, because I generally work out at home mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad because you, you, you definitely should not hate what you do as far as training, lifting, exercising, whatever you're, if you don't like what you're doing, you're not going to stick to doing it. Yeah. That's exactly why I've gone and I've tried before Mm -hmm. and absolutely hated it the entire time. Yeah. And so I didn't stick with it. Exactly. And before we get deeper, we need to hit you with our gratitude point. I almost forgot to be honest with you. Um, I didn't forget. You didn't forget? I didn't. Oh, good. I was going to remind you. Well, I remember what mine was, but in (laughs) each show we do a gratitude point where we basically take a moment to think about something that we're appreciative of. So I'm going to let you go first. All right. Uh, And it's on the subject of the topic today of that I'm just really grateful that I've gotten comfortable with being out of my comfort zone Yeah. um, and I'm able to now keep up with you at the gym. Yeah. And I want to narrow that down because I think you said that on one of the previous podcasts about your comfort zone. And for the record, it's okay to have the same recurring grateful point, I think. Um, But the more you can reach to more grateful points, I think the more you can evolve and realize, like, I truly think that being grateful really gives you beautiful perspective. So I'm going to, yeah, absolutely. I, I think what you may be saying and tell me if I'm wrong you're grateful for your body's, uh, not limitations, but what's the word? Like you're not as limited as you used to be. Yeah, absolutely. I'm you're stronger. Physical, yeah. I'm more confident. Um, and I, I'm not constantly trying to be invisible. Wow. Okay. Well, awesome. I, you, I think you beat mine, uh, <laughs> but mine's also about physical limitations. Um, what year was it that I hurt my neck? Um, I think 2011, 2011, it wasn't very long after I started in fitness, but, um, I actually broke my neck, uh, C six compression fracture, uh, pinch nerve, mild concussion, fell off a jet ski doing 60. I was very, very fortunate. I lost feeling in my arms. Um, wasn't able to do any sort of lifting or anything for a month. I was in a collar. I got to tell you that that was a huge wake up call that I was not invincible. And I'm very grateful that I don't have worse longstanding uh, problems. I have numbness and tingling in my arms and whatnot, but I'm, I'm reminded by it that I'm not uh, completely debilitated. And I'm, I was just very fortunate. So I'm grateful for that. Now let's get back into it. All right. Uh, So I was waiting for you to press a button and like make noise again. I don't know why. (laughs) (laughs) I can do that if you'd like. Um, So my idea of this podcast for today was while we were at the gym this morning, um, Matt goes to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, three times a week with the with his dudes. And a couple of weeks ago, um, I wanted to go with him, and I was nervous 
because I don't go to the gym. I usually work out at home. Um, and quite honestly, I if Matt's home when I'm working out, I usually shut the door of the room so he doesn't see me working out. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to put it in perspective, if this is the first episode you're hearing, Jenna, you've lost about 45 pounds. About that, yeah. About 45 pounds in the, over the course of two, three it's years. It's been... I guess all in all, it would be four years. Okay. Oh, four years with just 20 minutes at home, five days a week, very right. light and, dumbbells and, and eating And the working correctly. out has really only been since last April, so yeah. about, a, about a year and a half. So it just goes to show, you know, what you can do at home. Anyway, back into it. Yeah. So several times you've really pushed me to go to the gym in the past, um, and I went and I struggled. Like you, you can't keep yourself together and suck it in and make sure you're not looking Mm. your worst and do an exercise and not like pass out because you're like sucking it in and not breathing. And that's a lot to um, be thinking about for sure. Yeah. Especially when you're not used to working out. I had no muscle memory. I was really uncomfortable. Um, I I didn't have reserve to do these workouts Mm -hmm. or these movements for very long without really feeling short of breath and tired and weak. Yeah. And um, so compound that with being um, not having very much self-confidence yeah. and um, really just trying to make myself as invisible as possible. Cause I was, I, I was uncomfortable. I was big. I was overweight. I knew that. Yeah. And at that time it wasn't like putting yourself out there trying to be uncomfortable for progress. It was just uncomfortable with zero direction. Right. Yeah. And you, I wanted to punch you every yeah. time. So in <laughs> every time you like tried to encourage me, mm-hmm. that's something that into or it, um, inspires you at the gym. Yeah, is to be like, yeah, come on, do it, mm-hmm. and um, that brought attention to me, and I wanted to just melt on the floor every yeah. time you brought any extra attention to me at the gym. Well, and that was early in my fitness journey because I had zero awareness of balance I, I did not balance things well at all um and not everybody responds that way you know not every not every right. response not everybody responds to being screamed at come on get it let's do it um you know <laughs> yeah i think that's more of a dude thing yeah but and i'll tell you that now i have such a better awareness of who responds to it and who doesn't yeah you, you can just tell uh then i had I was, no, I was just like, everybody, of course, everybody would love to be screamed at. Of course, that sounds great. (laughs) Um, Go ahead. I keep interrupting you. Um, So, and I, I kept quitting. Um, Like I, I wanted to go spend that time with you. I wanted to Mm. be stronger, but once I got there, I was like, I can't do this. I'm really uncomfortable. And I quit. What do you think the biggest reason was? Was You think it was just a conglomerate or? Oh yeah, it was definitely um, a, a combination of several things. One, I didn't have the muscle memory. I didn't have the strength. Um, two, I was uncomfortable with the movements, the machines. I didn't know how they worked. Mm-hmm. So I was completely relying on you. And um, so I, I literally got caught several times by people in the gym trying to read those tiny little instructions yeah. on the side of the machine. And that was even intimidating of sure those they're like little stick people. They're yeah. really hard. They're really difficult to understand in such tiny little writing. Yeah. Um, so I felt like I was holding you back from your workout. Um, Man. It, it was just a, it was just a combination of a, a lot, lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was uncomfortable with myself too. And the fact that I got like super short of breath, like the second rep of the first movement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just quit. I, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, I tried to, yeah, but I I didn't enjoy it. So, and how I started out in fitness was I was I started going to the gym after like an alter an altercation in a parking lot, and I realized that day that I had no way of defending myself. I was about 130, 135 pounds, soaking wet. Um, so I got in the gym the next day with a good friend of mine, Eric Bowles, and for the next eight months, we went five days a week. I saw my body change and I I built confidence. I've never been big. I've always been a small guy. So I don't have the perspective of, you know, being heavy, but I, I was always self-conscious and I'll be honest, I still deal with it of bigorexia, you know, and it's basically just when you're a small guy, you look around and you compare yourself naturally 
and you're like, oh, I'm not as big as that guy or I'm not as lean as that guy. And, you know, it's just never enough. So I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. But I didn't have, I, I still don't think I went through the same level of, I guess, just intimidation to step in the door, you mm-hmm. know, because I, I think I was, I was starting out at a more uh, regular looking guy, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I think there's a difference when you walk in a gym and you're heavy as compared to when you're thin. There's yeah, obviously, there's well, a different I, stigma. There is, but it's still intimidation. Absolutely. Um, because you didn't have that muscle memory. You didn't have that knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did have that moment of, I have to do something about this. Yeah. Um, and I think mine last April, you woke me up one morning and said, we need to go somewhere. We need to go on a trip. So um, I booked a cruise for us to go on. And that started really, um, we went on a cruise four years ago and I was uncomfortable the whole time. I made myself wear a bathing suit, Mm. but I was uncomfortable the whole time. So I said to myself, I'm going to make myself be less uncomfortable this time. Um, so that day, literally, um, I booked the cruise and I started doing some squats. That's all I did. That's all I started with was literally. I remember that now. While I was waiting for the shower to warm up, I would do like 20 squats. I remember that. And then I got up to like 50. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started like the shower was losing heat by the time I was (laughs) done with the shower because I was doing enough. So then I started doing like some side squats, literally just in the bathroom as soon as I woke up before I got in the shower in the morning and then it evolved into, you know, that I got a yoga mat and started stretching. And then it was, I remember it being a big deal when we went to Academy and bought some five pound weights and 10 pound weights. Yeah. Um, and I just did some research. Like I started looking at some really simple exercises on Pinterest and I started following a couple people on social media and watching their example workouts and just started doing different movements and it really grew from there to where I I do a 20 minute workout every morning or five days a week I do a 20 yeah. minute workout I remember it growing so slowly um, and there there was a point where I, I remember I came to you and I was extremely worried about your health like I was legitimately, concerned because it was it was getting to the point where it was just out of control and like I remember just saying I'm very concerned for your health and there was nothing I could say or do I didn't want to force you not that that would even work I was also a personal trainer I was in pretty good shape like I I thought of all those different aspects of how is this going to sound coming from me you know it has to be put so delicately and all I could do was just sneak in good job. Congrats. Keep going. I could only sneak in those words ever so often. Yeah, and you did an amazing job. Honestly, the other way around, I think I would have gotten upset with you and uh, frustrated and impatient. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you were patient for a long time, like a couple years. Um, And those several times that I tried and I hated it, really set the groundwork for when I was ready to do it on my own. Mm. I had learned from you how to do a proper squat, how to do a proper lunge, how to do some basic movements. And so even though you weren't successful getting me to learn to love it or to stick with it, you had planted the seed. Mm. And I, I think that's important to anyone trying to help change a loved one or a friend is that, even if they don't stick with it, you're planting the seed yeah. um, for hopefully in the future for them to to implement some long-lasting change. Yeah. And I know that we're talking about gym intimidation, but I think that this, this still is center aligned with you had a reason that you right. were going. You had, a, you had your why. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a big deal as far as, you know, you don't have to figure out your your real why, Mm -hmm. like you may have a couple of whys that don't work out or don't, you don't stick to it. But at some point it will click Mm -hmm. even just 
you know, booking a vacation and being like, okay, well, I need to get myself together here. Yeah. Um, and yours was, you know, that incident in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, and you may not even know at the time that that's your why. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, I, I think you're right. I, I mean, I got in the gym with the reasoning to be, to be able to defend myself. It really wasn't my long lasting, I'm going to be fit and healthy and like I found this message, I found the reason for this podcast within fitness. So I, I definitely grew. I've grown so much through it. Um, but it, without my start, without my slight reason, I wouldn't have continued. And right. and I think your why has changed over the years as well. Yeah. Um, but it's that first click to really get you to propel you forward to to start. Yeah. Um, and and I think. Um, going back to the original subject of the being intimidated, mm -hmm. going to the gym, um, you know, I started consistently just literally on the tile in our bathroom. Yeah. And then it grew to, I was just using some really light weights and um, wouldn't let you watch a workout. And it's really been um, not until recently that I was comfortable with you being in your studio, yeah, which is also my workout area, yep. in the mornings, if you're doing something, I used to kick you out. And now I, I feel comfortable enough to, you know, l let you stay in your studio right. while I work out in there. Thank you. I appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> All the videos that you guys see, that's the studio and where things are shot. And yeah. that's now her little area as well. Um, so I think it's a huge, huge milestone for me to be able to go to the gym and not be completely intimidated and to let you even film it for the blog. Absolutely. The blog. Um, you know, that that's just physical proof how far I've come in the last year and a half Absolutely. specifically. Yeah. Um, because a year and a half ago, I would not have even thought mm -mm. of you filming anything of me. No. And I think that you, um, as the listeners can probably tell to you know up until recently i was just having a few cameos here and there in his videos and now um my goal is to be consistently on the vlog in your videos yeah um and it's a it's a confidence thing um because i was i was uncomfortable in front of the camera yeah so and I, my size hasn't changed really um it's just my my confidence yeah has changed too. And I, you sparked a thought whenever you were talking about confidence earlier and your why sort of changing. So you're exactly right. I think your why can change. And I think the reason that it maybe even should change a little bit, maybe add on wise, is because your confidence grows. When I, again, when I started doing all this fitness stuff, I never had any dreams or aspirations of of starting a business or starting a company because I didn't think I was worthy. It wasn't even in my thought process. But yeah. But because of the the gym and because of continuing to show up, it built my confidence. I changed my body. Yeah. I changed my life. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, a, a recurring thing that, that we have is behavior change, um, consistent, long-lasting changes yeah. over all of your habits. Yeah. But you have to start somewhere. And I think a really good, easy place to start because you can physically see the changes is – making your body stronger absolutely because it makes your mind stronger when yep. you realize that you can make your body do things that you didn't think you could do before well and you know when you change internally it's elusive as compared to external changes right you know right and you know going back to before i remember you really pushing me to do progress pictures yeah and i got so upset with you because mm -hmm. i did not want to take pictures and it was a good maybe four months that you were after me about taking progress pictures. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, yeah, and for the record, I wasn't saying take these progress photos so I can see them. I was saying, take the progress photos, put them in a safe and put it in the right. ocean somewhere. Just, just, just to have them just for myself. Just record them. Just, yeah. just have them. And I wouldn't do it. Um, and I remember the day that we ended up doing progress pictures and, and now I really do regret not having pictures of myself at my biggest. Yeah. Um, so I can truly see how much I've changed. 
But I remember that day that I literally, I wanted to cry. Yeah. And my face in that picture looks like, like I was forcing myself to smile and it was more of like, mm. yeah, well, <laughs> and it's not uncommon. I mean, yeah. the, the, cl- the clients that some clients that I have, you know, I have to, I have to really encourage it. Um, because it, I get it. I get it. I mean, when I look back at my photos and when I was such a scrawny little guy, um, now I'm able to be proud. But when I yeah. took those photos, I hated it. I mean, yeah. I remember you were taking those photos in the living room here at our house and I just, I could not stand it. Yeah. Your face says it all. It was terrible. <laughs> um, but it's so important. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so if you're listening to this, you haven't taken progress pictures, do it. Even if you take selfies in the bathroom mirror, that's right. Do it. Um, and you don't have to ever show anyone else. That's right. But those are your pictures that six months from now, five years from now, you can look back and say, this is a literal comparison mm-hmm. of how far I have come. And when you have those days where you're like, I'm not making any progress, the scale's not changing, mm-hmm. my, you know, whatever it is, you know, you can look at those pictures and see, hey, like my quads look different or, yeah. you know, look at my back is different or, you know, my muffin top smaller or right. whatever it is. Because if you're gaining muscle and losing fat, you really, you're not going to see the scale mm-hmm. just continue to drop. Um, well, and we all know that, you know, those micro changes that yeah. are happening, you don't see on a daily basis because right. you see yourself and your, you know, your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend yeah. or whoever sees it might not see it. But, you know, when you run into a coworker and they haven't seen you for a, a month, they're like, oh, my God, what have you been doing? And you're like, nothing. I've been starving myself. You know, like <laughs> it, it, that's that's when the magic happens. Um, yeah. And again, I think this all this all ties into gym intimidation because uh, it builds that confidence. But I want I wanted to give a takeaway point for somebody that's like, screw that. I'm not going to the gym. Or it's really difficult to go to the gym. If it's if it's so difficult that you can't go to the gym, I say start at home. Yeah. I, I say start at home. If you're at home and you're ready to graduate, um, or if you don't think you could be disciplined enough at home to do things, I'll be point blank honest. Right now in my journey, I, I, I don't do well at home training. I, I have to be in a gym just because I think that's how it started, obviously. But when I'm at the gym, I know it's time to work. We're here to do what we came to do and then get out. Um, so I would tell you the best thing you can do is to get a gym buddy, a uh, accountability buddy. Yeah. And if you can't find someone, then get involved in a community that can help keep you accountable. Um, you know, online forums on Facebook. Uh, I mean, online forums, I don't know. <laughs> Facebook groups on Facebook. <laughs> there are also forums. I mean, just get out and get to know people, even if it's online. That's the beauty of the internet. Um, and you sort of just have to take the plunge. You, yeah, you do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, um, if you want to do it, you're going to make it happen. Exactly. Um, you know, I work out in my pajamas and my bare feet every morning. Exactly. So the, you know, the excuse of, well, I don't have the money or I need to get gear or I need mm-hmm. to buy weights. Sure. Um, you, you don't need any of that to get started. No. There are a million body weight exercises that you can do. You know, everyone has access to the internet. Everyone has access to you know, Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest, somewhere where you can follow somebody who has some very basic movements that you can start with and you can grow from there. Exactly. And as far as the community goes, let's say you can't find a community out there. Keep tuning into this podcast. Go to Matt Lane Fitness on YouTube. Uh, Go to Matt Lane Fitness on Facebook, Instagram. I'm actually starting, by the time you're hearing this, it might have already been started, but a Facebook group. Um, I real I'm going to be developing a group that is people that are looking for like-minded people that are trying to get better than yesterday every day. Um, so I'm building that as we speak. Yeah. And I think that goes back to literally the meaning behind that phrase is that you're trying to be better than yourself mm-hmm. and it doesn't say how much it doesn't quantify right. how much it's slow progress Yep. It's progress. Absolutely. Any progress is progress. Yep. Absolutely. I, I, I thought of that 
that that phrase, the slogan of this company, of this podcast, that came through a lot of years of being in the gym and sort of beating myself up about not being big enough. It came directly from that gym intimidation. It came directly from that bigorexia that I still have and still deal with. I have to realize that as long as I'm progressing, whether it be mental, physical, uh, whatever it is, if I'm progressing, then I'm being better than yesterday every day. And, and I was thinking about something this morning that if you're not true to yourself, it's, it's being true to yourself is really hard. It is. You know, if you it, just lie to yourself and say, no, it's fine. I don't need to go to the gym or no, it's fine. I don't need to, you know, worry about my health. It's real easy to lie to yourself. It's real easy to fake it. Yeah, it is. Being truthful is so much more difficult. And I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> yes, you <laughs> sorry. <are. laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's my two cents. Yeah. A good two cents. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in closing, slow progress, consistency, um, start where you're comfortable and then slowly work your way out of your comfort zone. Yep. And I can guarantee your comfort zone is going to grow. Absolutely. If you're consistent. Absolutely. And listen, if you have any questions about fitness, I do not know it all, but I know a thing or two. And I know I can find the answers if I don't know it. Reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, MattLaneFitness at gmail.com, YouTube, Google, Yahoo, all the all the media You're platforms. Everywhere. I am everywhere. Reach out to me. I, w- I would be more than happy to talk to you. Um, and I'm not going to charge you or anything. Just I love talking about this. My whole goal, our whole goal. That's why we have a podcast. That's Yeah, it's so we can get this <laughs> message out. I, I feel that we have been given a message that we are vessels. We are supposed to continue this message. If this benefits you, reach out. I will help you in any way that I can. Yeah, that's, I think that's really the basis of why we started this podcast yeah. is to help inspire and help other people. Absolutely. All right, I think that's it. All right, later, guys. This has been the Better Than Yesterday Everyday Podcast. We want to thank you for listening and invite you to subscribe to the show as well and follow Matt Lane Fitness on YouTube. Until next time, you don't have to be perfect. Just be better than yesterday every day.